Hello, I'm Andrew G. Marshall from Marshall Method Therapy and welcome to our video with a member of my team, Caroline, and we're discussing social media and parenting. So what are the concerns of parents when it comes to their teenagers and their young children's social media presence? Well, I can really understand how people do get very, very anxious about this whole subject. You've only got to look around for a little while to see there's so much information about cyberbullying and it's a reality. Then there's sexting and then there's online security. And you do find that parents can get very worried about this. So I think it's probably better if this issue is dealt with as a team between the two of you. What could be the handicaps to that? Well, yes, that's, that's true. Um, but the problem is that partners very often have very different ideas about their own use of social media. So um, there's this new term, uh, sharenting, for example, and sometimes parents aren't very uh, diplomatic about what they themselves put on Facebook, um, maybe putting pictures of their children, which can actually play into the whole cyberbullying thing. They haven't asked their permission. Um, and also, the other issue with using social media is that we know that using it a lot every day has a mental health aspect to it and they themselves might use it a lot so one side might feel relaxed about it and the other might, might feel much less relaxed. So really often you could actually be arguing not just about your children and social media but each other's use of social media. I can yeah. see that there can be quite a lot of issues and this could be a really difficult conversation. Yeah. Um, we've actually broken this down into three particular problems that might happen. So let's talk about the first one. Well, the, the first issue is that sometimes people really don't like arguing. They find arguing very difficult. Yes. Arguing and contentious issues scare people off. And so it's a good idea to reframe the idea of arguing amongst couples so that we can think about it as constructive debate and part of a negotiating process. And that's really important because it allows all the issues to come up to the surface and it's much better to take longer arguing than having a, a false agreement which one person is going to sign up to and then undermine. So I think it's really useful that idea yeah. that arguing is okay and we're going to call it constructive debate. Brilliant, so we're going to have a constructive debate. What's the next problem well, that could come it up? it sort of leads into the next issue which is that very often, particularly nowadays, people have a win-or-lose mentality. Oops. And that is really hard, because if you believe that it's important for you to always win an argument, because this is how we've been brought up, then it makes it very difficult to work as a partnership. Yeah, and in fact, rather than having a right and wrong I answer, probably each person has got some useful information that together you can build a better solution than just taking your solution or my solution. So I think that's another very good point. Um, and the third one, the third problem that people can fall into when they're having a, a vivid debate. Well, that's when they start escalating and the whole one issue suddenly turns into lots of different issues problems that the part, one partner or the other partner has stored up. Maybe, maybe it's to do with social media, but it, it might suddenly be to do with who's doing what in the marriage or in the partnership or in the parenting role. So it's important to know how to focus down, work out what the priorities are. And stick to one topic at a time. Yes. So some good tips there. If you'd like to find out more, you can go to our website, which is www.andrewgmarshall.com.